Good morning, everyone. We are going to get started here in a minute. Just want to welcome you all that have already logged in here. We have about one minute till we're going to start. Good morning to all my Estes. It is Monday, so thank you for sharing your day off or morning with me. I appreciate it. Welcome to Alexander's Aesthetics first webinar. We are very excited to be sharing all of this great information with you. Alexander's has two locations. There is one in California and one in Colorado, and we are a distributor of all of your skincare needs. At the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you all the information for both locations, um, so you can call any of us at any time if you have any other questions or if you'd like to place an order or any of that good stuff. Also, if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to type them into that nifty little chat box, and I will be answering all of them at the end. Also, please keep in mind, there is no stupid question. There is, that is not a thing to me. So please ask, everyone probably has the same questions as you do. Um, so please ask, that is what we are here for. So let's get started. Um, you will also be seeing my, you will also be hearing Wendy at the end here with me. She's gonna help field those questions so that we can get to answer all of them. So Wendy is our Colorado location. Here I am, my name is Tiffany Montebano. I have been a licensed esthetician since 1999. I am a business owner and I have been working since 99. Um, and I have been educating for Alexander's since about 2010. Um, so I am really excited to again start this webinar series. I'm super excited that all of you guys decided to join us today. So let's get into it. This is what we're gonna cover today. We are gonna cover an easy to follow protocol. I am going to also talk about modalities and where to plug those in. Keep in mind, we don't sell equipment. So when I'm talking about a modality, I'm not talking about a specific brand of equipment. So whatever you currently have, this is where you're gonna plug that into whatever area I'm talking about. We are gonna go into detail about 
the products that I'm recommending during this protocol because we do carry all of those products that I'm going to be talking about today. So there is going to be that product knowledge in there. The last thing we're gonna wrap up with is client home care, which to me, if any of you have ever heard me speak, I will always tell you that home care is the most important part of our job. So we need to make sure that when clients come in, we definitely discuss that home care with them as well. I also made a product key that is gonna help you follow the manufacturer that I'm talking about, because I am gonna talk about a couple of different manufacturers. So that product key is gonna include SkinScript, Hale and & Hush, and the Martini masks. Those are the products that we are going to be using this morning in this protocol. So also keep in mind, this is truly based on my working with aging clients. So it might be slightly outside of the box for what the manufacturers would tell you to do. Um, but what I'm hoping is that this is going to ignite your creative ability to create new protocols within your own office as well. Hopefully this is a good stepping stone for you. That is our goal today. So now let's talk protocol. First step, cleanse with quiet wash. Second step, we're gonna cleanse with the glycolic cleanser. Third step, exfoliation with the passion fruit enzyme. As you guys can see, you can follow along with the HHSS and the SS for Hail Hush and Skin Script. The next step, obviously, if necessary, you're going to do extractions. Step five is our serum application. This is where I'm going to be using the Martini Mask Serum from the sheet mask itself. The masks come with a lot of extra serum, which is wonderful because the mask is soaked, obviously. But I found that I would always end up with extra serum and I don't personally like to be wasteful. So this product, this protocol is utilizing all of that serum in that mask. Okay, the last step is actually using the sheet mask itself. And then we will go into those finishing products that include both skin script and hail and hush. So who would like a printable protocol to take away from this webinar today? You can raise your hand in that little chat box there. Now, even if you didn't raise your hand, something exciting is you all are going to have a printed out. You can go to the PDF and print it out. So no worries. You will definitely be able to keep this for yourself and use it in your own office as needed all right now let's get into the good stuff so that first cleanse is that quiet wash i personally like to use the quiet wash for most all of my first cleanses the reason being it's full of anti-inflammatory properties and it does remove all dirt, debris, makeup, anything else that can be lathered on your client's face when they come in. It does have a gentle foaming action, but not enough to strip the skin of its protective barrier. I like this initially because when I do my skin analysis, I want to see the skin at its cleanest and purest form before I start doing anything aggressive to it. This gives me a better idea of where to go within the protocol and if I need to make any adjustments within that. So that's the first cleanse. The second cleanse I like to use is the glycolic cleanser by SkinScript because this will start some of that exfoliation process. So it is a cleanser, obviously, right? So we are gonna wash that off, but it is a 17% glycolic with a pH of three. So it's a strong cleanser. This is gonna help degrease the skin before we actually put the enzyme 
on. So this is great if the skin feels as though there's a lot of buildup or it's an uneven texture. So the point of the glycolic cleanser is to help the exfoliation process. That way the enzyme has an easier time doing its job getting that dead skin to come off. Let's also keep in mind that the enzyme we're about to go into and we're gonna use isn't a strong exfoliant. So the glycolic is where it's at. If you know the skin needs a boost of exfoliation, get feisty with yourself and add, add that glycolic cleanser in there. If you also need to bump that up, you can add some kind of scrub to it. Skin Script has the raspberry scrub and the retinol scrub as well, or again, any other kind of granule a product that you have, you can add that into the cleanser as well to start breaking down any of that extra skin. I personally, this is a personal preference, I am a hot towel lover, so I remove all of my products with towels. So this particular protocol, I have four towels that I have in my cavi for it. Otherwise, four by fours, two by twos, whatever you want to use that makes you happy, totally fine. All right. Next step, the exfoliation. So the exfoliant that we're gonna use for this protocol is the passion fruit enzyme, which is meant for firming and tightening. It is meant for fits one, two, and three. The exfoliant itself is passion fruit. It's a puree, a passion fruit puree, if I can get all of those words out. Um, which is calming and an antioxidant. And it's also rich in vitamin A. So all the things are gonna help smooth the skin out. We're gonna leave this on seven to 10 minutes. Now this particular exfoliant, this is all about that color and peptide. And it's 22% of the formula. What is the peptide you ask? Well, so this amazing little ingredient, this collarin peptide, creates dermal warmth in the skin, which is what is going to stimulate the fibroblast, which then in turn stimulates your collagen and elastin. It's kind of like magic. So the tingle factor on this is about a two. You're not really doing a lot of actual prickly exfoliation with this. So your client won't feel a lot of that type of action, but they will feel heat within the skin. Again, they're not gonna feel like they're on fire necessarily, but they will feel that warmth. Now, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see that it looks like you've set them on fire because a lot of the time the skin gets super red, which we actually really want. We want that, that redness in there. There's also rape seed oil, not to be confused with grape. It is not supposed to be grape seed. It is rape seed. It's a softening agent. There's also the noni fruit in there, which is an antioxidant. So this is going to help firm the skin up quite quickly. So who is this for? The skin that's in need of firming, aging, or even normal skin. I do like to use this if someone looks a little dull as well, that kind of gray, sallow look. This peptide is gonna help create that warmth. So again, you're gonna get some blood flow and you're really going to see that brightness in the skin, but it's also gonna tighten it up. Now, if this is not your first rodeo with your client, boost this up by adding some steam. If you are a steam person, then you can add some steam to warm it up a little more. If you aren't a steam lover, you can use, well, what I use is saran wrap to create occlusion on the skin and then add a hot towel on top of that to get that extra warmth. So this can also be done as a weekly treatment if you want to create a long-term or quicker effect really for your client. You can do this weekly without doing any uh, peeling or anything like that. Your client's skin will turn red. So do not be concerned. I know we normally get a little worried when, our, when we turn our 
client skin red, but this one's great. We like this kind of redness, okay? And then again, remove this however makes you happy. And then we will move on to the next. How many of you have used the skin script passion fruit enzyme? You can raise your hand in that fancy little chat box again. Let's see here. So a few of you have, awesome. All right, so for those of you that have, you have noticed that the skin has turned red, but it may stay red for maybe the day. Some people it may stay red a little bit longer. Again, not something to be super concerned about. So just warn your client, they might be what I say, a little pink for a day or so. All right. Now. The serum application. So this is again where we're going to get creative using the gold martini mask. The first step is to empty. I empty the whole contents of the mask into a bowl. It doesn't matter the bowl. I don't care what kind of bowl you use. Whatever makes you happy. So you empty the whole thing out, mask and all, because all of that serum is going to be in that bowl, which is what we're going to use. Now you can use a fan brush or your hands to apply the serum to the skin, whatever you prefer to do. Now, if you apply, if you're a hand applier, which is generally what I am, you can physically massage this in with your hands. Now, if you wanna boost this protocol up, you can use a handheld device that has ionization or some sort of penetration product factor whatever the case may be because that way it'll help penetrate the serum into the skin there's a lot of different handheld devices out there the type of device that i'm talking about something like the skin buddy if you've heard that that's an example of a handheld um, ionization device i actually have two devices, so I have one in each hand to create that quote unquote massage experience, which I actually took that from another esthetician. Oh, sorry, I got real excited about the clicking. Um, I actually took that having both machines at the same time on the skin. It feels pretty amazing. An esthetician did that to me during a facial, so I've in turn clearly stolen it and am now doing it on my clients. So this can, again, that's this, this serum is taking over that massage portion of your protocol. Now they're still, again, getting a massage so they feel like they're nice and relaxed, but the point for you is to penetrate that serum into the skin. So a, a side trick here is the skin generally is gonna start to absorb the product, obviously the goal, but if you're finding that it's absorbing too fast into the skin, I personally will like to add another product for extra slip. This is the product that I tend to add is the Hush Hydrate, which we will go into a little bit more in a little bit here. So that again, it creates some slip. I um, mean, it is a water soluble and it's anti-inflammatory and it can be used for ionization as well. So I do know that it will work with whatever handheld devices you have. The gold mask is meant for firming and lifting. So we're staying within that theme. It's filled with collagen, elastin, hyaluronic, and a personal favorite of mine, niacinamide. Why is that my favorite? Well, let's think about it. Going back to why the collarin peptide is so wonderful is because of that dermal warmth that it creates. Well, niacinamide is stimulating as well, which helps remove toxins and brighten the skin up. This particular step, I don't remove any excess moisture from the skin. If you've added a different product, a gel or some other type of product to add that slip, if you've done that multifunction machine, then you may want to remove that. If you didn't or whatever else you've added that can stay on the skin, I kind of like to leave everything on there. Or again, if necessary, go ahead and remove. Now this next step, this is that tough one here, we're masking. So 
you just put the mask on. It's not too challenging. This particular mask does actually come in two parts. So the face and then the bottom where the mouth is as well. So you're gonna apply that, leave it 15 to 20 minutes, okay? Now, you can massage something else while they are masking. So this is what we can do during that phase. So again, you can, if you want to massage the head, the neck, the shoulders, the arms, feet, if those don't freak you out, rub away. Us, and also obviously know where, what you're allowed to do. Us in California, we sadly aren't allowed to do anything. So um, I actually tend to take this time and do my client notes, things like that. So I remember what I did. You can also bump this up. So how we bump this up if you want to this is how you're up in that ante you're going to add microcurrent to this step the mask itself can be used as the conductor so a trick that i tend to also use for this is again i add a little bit of that hush hydrate there it's anti-inflammatory it supports moisture it protects the skin and amazingly enough it works as a conductor also so you can apply, if need be, either apply a little more of that Hush Hydrate to the skin prior to adding the mask, or you can add, if necessary, you can add a slight layer of the Hush Hydrate to the top of that mask, just again, to give you a little bit of slip and glide if you need it. But again, you can add that microcurrent to the step that can boost your facial. This may not work for all microcurrent machines, but it is definitely something to look into with your tools. It should, um, but again, it, it might not, but we always wanna try to bump things up, right? So that is what we're doing during our masking. Please guys, don't forget, if you have questions, pop those into that chat box so that we can answer them at the end all right into our finishing products so once you've removed that mask again that's going to be a personal preference of do you want to remove any excess product or is there any excess product to remove so again you don't actually have to remove anything with a towel or anything like that at the end after that mask that's again going to be up to you the products that i like to finish with with this particular protocol is i like to start the cucumber toner this for me is one of those desert island products it's something that i personally cannot live without i love it so much there are two ways to apply this. You can either spritz it on the skin or you can use cotton. Two by two, something like that uh, to apply it. This, the cucumber toner, is going to help rebalance the water levels in the skin so it's ready to take on everything else that we are going to apply. It does not have a very strong scent to it, which is also another reason why I personally like it. The next product is another Desert Island product for me, the Ageless Serum. This is a high concentration of hyaluronic acid. It's gonna reduce inflammation and prevent aging. Oh, isn't that the point, right? That's the point of this whole protocol. So one, one pump will get the whole, will get the face. Um, if you do two, I like to pat this product in personally and I do like to make sure I get it on the decollete as well I want to make sure that our chest neck and face all age right at the same pace so I do like to add it to the chest as well I don't personally like to rub this product in because my hands will look pretty phenomenal after all of these facials that I do in this ageless serum, but I want it to go into my client's face, right? So I like to gently pat it into the skin. The next product, again, is that Hush Hydrate that we love so much, because it is anti-inflammatory. It supports that moisture, which again, we're trying to pump into the skin. 
So two to three pumps, and I gently also press this into the skin as well, make sure that we're getting that decollete, neck and face all in one. And then this particular SPF, I really I love the Hale and Hush SPF for after my facials, well, on a daily basis as well, but I do like this one. It is a 13.5% zinc. It also has antioxidant properties in it and it's gonna protect the skin. So again, staying with that theme, antioxidant, hydration, protection, that's all of the things that we need to make sure that we are providing in this whole protocol. The other reason why I like this SPF for the end of my facials is it doesn't leave the skin white and chalky at the end there. You want it to look, hopefully it still has some of that red, not red, let me take that one back, a nice flushed glow. It's not gonna take that away from your client. You want your client's skin to look that way. The zinc oxide is not going to create that, again, that chalky look at the end. So your client will look nice and shiny. Okay, getting into our home care recommendations. This obviously is going to be very catered to your clients, but this tends to be the first round that I go with. So we go with that quiet wash. Again, going back, that gentle foam, it doesn't strip, it reduces inflammation. And I like this also as a transition cleanser for those people who might be using a harsh foaming cleanser, something inappropriate like bar soap that hurts your soul a little bit that your client's using. This is a nice transition because some people really just want that foam. They feel that their skin is cleaner and not that it's not cleaner, but what they don't obviously realize yet is that they've stripped their skin with that very aggressive foam. So I like this one because it's a good transition. It'll get them to also trust what you're recommending to them, but you also get what you want because they're gonna have nice hydrated skin that is not stripped when they come back. So that quiet wash is what I recommend for home at first. Again, that cucumber toner, because this is going to help, again, prevent the transepidermal water loss, and it's going to help replenish the skin's water level. The cucumber toner, I also like to recommend to my clients either carrying it with them in their purse. I personally have one in my car, in my purse. Obviously, it's in my office. It's at my house everywhere, because you can spray this all day long. If you have those clients that sit in their air conditioned and or heated office all day, their skin's gonna get nice and dehydrated. Cucumber toner is always gonna help bounce that back up. Plus it does come in that spray so they can just spray it on. It's not gonna take them lots of time. Next step is that ageless serum. Again, adding that hyaluronic acid back into the skin. We're reducing inflammation and we're preventing the signs of aging. Again, the point of the protocol, right? Anti-aging. When the skin doesn't have enough water, nothing else is going to function, right? So we want to make sure that we're adding that hyaluronic back into the skin. And we want them to be using all of these, obviously, morning and night. The next serum I like to add in there is the vitamin C. This, the skin script vitamin C is a 10% L-ascorbic, so it's going to help encourage healthy collagen and elastin. It also has SNAP8 peptide that's gonna help soften wrinkles. So pro tip on this one, if people don't wanna add, cause this can be a little challenging when we're trying to create a brand new system for some of our clients. If they don't want to do one serum and then another serum, you can just add the Ageless and the vitamin C together and put them on the skin. It will be fine. Um, I, I do that also. Don't tell anyone. But you can definitely add them together and make that one step for your client. We, I, I personally, again, 100% personal preference, I like the vitamin C AM 
and PM because it's really gonna help brighten the skin up. Uh, if your client has the hyperpigmentation or again that dull, that dull skin, that dull coloring, the vitamin C and kind of pumping them full of that is really going to help um, get their skin that great brightness much faster. So again, I personally like it for AM and PM. The next serum I generally recommend is the Rare Retinol by Hale and Hush. So this is a retinaldehyde called Iconic A, which helps again soften wrinkles, but it's not going to irritate the skin. This retinol is also this particular retinol product is also full of anti-glycation and anti-inflammatory properties so let's go back anti-glycation if we all remember that's basically the skin kind of collapsing right on itself so if we think of our skin as that mattress and those springs it's keeping those springs springy so that those springs don't collapse in on each other to get that crisscross wrinkle effect right that we don't want this product i also i only want my clients using it at night i again personally i only have them use it three nights a week to start now those three nights a week i give them i say i want you to use this monday wednesday friday if you put it in as a regimen and tell them which days you want it it helps them remember if you just say three days, whatever three days make you happy, a lot of times they'll forget. Did I use it Tuesday? Maybe I shouldn't use it Wednesday. Did I already use it last night? I don't remember. So if you put it in there, these are the days of the week, they generally will follow along. Acai moisturizer. I love this moisturizer. I mean, I've said that about everything, right? But I do, I love them all. So the acai moisturizer, it really it's hydrating and it's going to again protect the skin it's going to protect from environmental damage so acai is known for its rich antioxidant and guess what anti-inflammatory properties who would have known right so again we're, we're sticking with that theme the acai moisturizer is a nice it's not a very very heavy feeling texture moisturizer but it's a nice silky smooth moisturizer that is again going to help pump the skin full of those anti-inflammatory and we're going to hydrate that up now this is these are a lot this is a lot of product right this this can be overwhelming for your clients so not all of your clients are going to want 65 brand new products at a time right so what i tend to do is i go through the regimen that i would like to see them eventually graduate into if they're not ready for the whole one which is fine i pick a couple of products that i think are going to show them the most benefits in the beginning i pick one or two and then whatever i don't give them this time or sell them i give them samples of the rest and i give them a description of when and how i want them to use it that way when they're getting feisty at home and they're like i want to try everything today that way they have the option to add in those other those other products without again having to commit and having them all in the very beginning okay now rebooking guys this this is what makes our business right so during that consultation that i know all of you do i tend to ask the client if coming in for services is something that they would like to start doing as a regular routine that helps me decide how i want to participate during participate how i want to proceed obviously i'm participating in the checkout process right because I don't, I don't, again, I don't want to overwhelm them in the very beginning. But my verbiage at the end tends to be, how does your skin feel? They tend to say, it's amazing. Then you go into, let's go ahead and schedule your next appointment five weeks from now. So that way it's on the calendar. Does Thursdays at two generally work the best for you? Now, 
I don't normally just pull a date and time out of the air. If they came in, it was Thursday at two that they started. I generally throw that same day, same time back at them to see if that is generally when they would like to come back. A lot of times too, if they want to be on a regular schedule, I like to keep it easy. So Thursday's at two, that always works great. Perfect. Let's schedule the next few appointments out. Thursday's at two, five weeks apart. Okay. Uh, most of your clients are going to ask how often they should come in and, and all of that anyway, so take that guessing out. The other thing is we also want to make sure that we're upselling them for their next service. Right? So if you notice during this one, or you've already brought up, which you probably would, that if you are a waxer and you do eyebrows, things like that, or if you get to tint, unlike us in California, sadly, um, eyebrow tints are one of the easiest upsells. You can always add that in. Hey, notice that your brows were a little light. Did you want after, did you want to add that into the next service as well? Again, it's going to show them that you're doing other things besides just the facials. And again, we're upselling. The other thing that I also like to kind of throw in. So let's say you didn't do that microcurrent at that masking point. Maybe that's an upsell for you, which is great. It should be, to be honest. So since aging, you would, you would say something along the lines of, since aging is your main concern, I would love to add X, Y, and Z to your next route, your next treatment to really boost those results. So if it's microcurrent, LED, whatever makes you happy, whatever that modality is, Talk to them about it when you're rebooking their next service. That way, again, we're bumping them up and we're bumping up that price point for you as well. So again, we're gonna make a little bit more. You're gonna get better results or different results or more aggressive results for that last one. So don't forget that we're gonna ask for that rebook. You're just, I again, sometimes I just assume that they're going to, and I immediately will throw it out there. Let's go ahead and schedule that next appointment for five weeks from now. It's this date, this time, all of that. That way then, again, it's on their books, it's on your books, and we know what we're doing for the next one. And then always thank them for coming in, right? I, I really like to make sure my clients know that I appreciate their business because obviously if I didn't have them I would have no business so thank them so much for coming in make sure they are aware of how to get in touch with you and the best ways to do that if they have any questions about their next treatment this last treatment or any of the products that they may have come away with okay so let's get into any questions that you might have for me. Wendy to pop in. Um, hi everyone. Um, just a quick reminder on the right hand side you can um, get that handout that we were talking about on the uh, protocol for today's webinar. And um, right now Tiffany we don't have any questions. Anybody no. have any questions? We'll just hang on for a minute. All right. Here we go. Here's a question um, from Athea. Um, are all these products helpful for oily skin? Yes, actually, uh, with the exception of the acai moisturizer, uh, that is that would be the only one that I would say um, wouldn't be a, wouldn't be the best for oily skin. But definitely the quiet wash is great because it's it's not going to strip the skin of its oil. It it will help break it down a little, but it won't be overly aggressive. Um, again, the cucumber toner that's going to help with your water moisture, um, not oil necessarily. So and the serums that I talked about, those are also all perfect for an oily skinned person, definitely. Good question. Okay, thank you. Um, got another question from Diana. Would you recommend the SkinScript retinol products? Yes, absolutely. If that's what you carry, absolutely. The, her retinol is awesome as well. I just go with the Hale and Hush one because that 
that's just the one that I have. Not not for any, not because I like it better necessarily than Skinscript by any means. I love them both pretty equally. Okay, great. Um, Peggy has a question. Um, what do you recommend for clients who also have rosacea? That's a really good question. So I would I I would probably go maybe more into the hail and hush. A rosacea client with this protocol, you could still do minus the um, the passion fruit enzyme. I wouldn't do that on a rosacea client. Um, we would go with a different. I would actually I would go with a coconut enzyme if you wanted to switch that. The coconut by Skinscript or I would use the Hale and Hush enzyme as well. Those aren't gonna be tightening necessarily, but we're still gonna get some exfoliation. The coconut is gonna be hydrating and it could do a little stimulation, but again, not to the point where it would irritate a rosacea client. Um, but you may, depending on how severe, you may wanna switch the rest of the skin script protocol in with the Hale and Hush only because it has most of them tend to have more anti-inflammatory properties um, than skin script because Hail and Hush is made for the hypersensitive and reactive client. Um, that's probably the way that I would I would go with that. But you can still do any of the other uh, modalities if you have the LED or any of that. You can definitely do or the um, ionization. You can definitely do that with rosacea clients as well. Good. Okay. Great. Um, we have another question from Susanna. Um, do we have to neutralize this enzyme? No, this one does not need to be neutralized. It's not an acid. This and this enzyme actually doesn't have any acids in it at all. Um, so again, it'll look like you've you've created kind of a fire monster on your client's face, but it definitely doesn't need to be need to be neutralized. It's a good question. Okay. And um, one more, what about skin prone to eczema patches? Anything to avoid? No, not necessarily. None of this is going to um, exacerbate any kind of eczema, psoriasis, things like that. And especially now in winter, um, I am definitely seeing more of, obviously more of my clients, myself included actually, um, have more of the eczema and psoriasis pop up. Um, I may or may not use more of um, a hydrating moisturizer at the end, but your Ageless Serum and your Cucumber Toner, those two are uh, some of my favorites for those particular challenge, skin challenges for your clients. So, um, so yeah, that's, I, I don't think anything, I know nothing in that protocol would necessarily irritate it. You may, if it's, Let's say if it's it's an active, um, more active and kind of irritated as far as if it's on the face, the psoriasis or eczema, then you may want to either steer clear of that area for the enzyme and go around it and put something else on that, um, or stay. You could stay away from it completely, but again, it's not an aggressive enzyme, so we are helping to stimulate everything else under the skin which again in turn a lot of times can help kind of lube up that may not be the correct term for that but i like to see that to me it makes sense um everything under the skin to add again more of that moisture in there so your ageless serum and all that will help as well um and i i actually have used the passion fruit on some of my eczema challenge clients and they've been okay with it so um good question you also also um, now that I'm thinking about it too, you can cut that passion fruit enzyme. If you have, SkinScript has the goji berry mask. Not that you have to use that one in particular, but you can cut the passion fruit a bit with a creamy mask of some sort to help it not be as necessarily warm, if that makes sense. Good question. Um, okay, we um, we have someone that says that they're not hearing audio. Can you guys raise your hand if you can hear us? We just want to make sure everybody's everybody's on. If you could just do a quick little hand raising, be great. 
Okay, great. Looks like looks like most people can still hear us. So apologize okay. for anyone that's having any audio issues. Um, it seems to have helped to have uh, log off and then log back in for somebody else. We could try that. Um, so thank you. Um, Tiffany, one other uh, last one. Susanna says, this was so helpful. Can we have another class soon? Oh, well, thanks. And what a great question. Yes, yes, we can. Um, we actually are going to be having another webinar. We're having two webinars. Um, this uh, one more this month. We have one February 10th with Bend Beauty. That is Monday, February 10th. And then the next one that I will be doing is March 9th. And that is going to be how to choose the best wax for you. Um, what I would love if you guys have particular questions or webinars that you would like to see from us, please send us that information or questions that you would like to see because we will definitely take all of that into consideration so that we can get you more information sooner than later. Um, Tiffany, we have one last question. Yeah, absolutely. Shoot away, question. Okay, when cutting the enzyme with mask, what quality is good? Um, to be perfectly honest, it, I, I tend to like to stay within the same, uh, manufacturer if I'm mixing like that. Um, and also to be perfectly honest, I really only ever mix skin script enzymes with skin script masks. Um, any other products that I use don't, I, I tend to not cut down ever. Um, but I mean, that's kind of one of those things you can try. Try it on yourself, obviously, first um, to see how it works. But I would I would go with a creamy base mask uh, with enzymes. Because some, um, I mean, if we're sticking within skin script enzymes, I would go with a creamy base mask to cut any of the enzymes with, if that makes sense and hopefully answered the question. <laughs> um okay also, and one quick thing oh, oh go ahead Jeff. Back up really quick yeah so i lied it's not march 9th i made that date up completely um i was looking at too many numbers at once it's monday march 2nd at 9 a.m that's why i got really excited there um for the the how to choose the best wax for you so i apologize i don't know why we have the march 9th up there it's not the correct date sorry guys march 2nd at 9 a.m okay Question, next one. Um, I think you just answered it, but Bonnie wants to know quantity and amount of the um, cutting the enzyme with mask. Oh, good question, Bonnie. Um, so for the enzyme, I I would use, well, for the mask, I would use like a, I use a dime size uh, mask quantity if I'm gonna cut anything down I don't you can do half and half if you feel the need to but I tend to use a little less mask than I do enzyme if that makes some sense hopefully also keep in mind the martini mask this particular the gold one you don't have to use this mask obviously for this protocol and any of the martini masks will have that serum in there so it can be used with with any of the ones that you already if you already use them or you have one of your favorites you can do it with with any of the martini masks that have the excess serum in them also any other questions I think that's all for now. Is that it? Awesome. All right, my friends. I'm so happy that everyone joined us. Thank you for, again, spending your Monday with me this morning. Um, please call us at either location. Um, if you have any, again, other questions, there's the numbers right there for California, Colorado. You can order online as well. The 
the office gets things out pretty quickly, generally same day shipping, all of that. Again, if you have questions, you can always call the office and ask or shoot an email. However you need to get to us, we will always get back to you. Um, yeah, so check us out if you haven't already. And again, thank you guys so much for joining us today. And I hope that we get to see you again soon. How do I end it? Well, I stopped sharing the screen, but I don't know how to.